Now we're seeing how we can create a queue in Orchestrator, how we can add items to that queue. So let's see how we can get the transaction items. Remember that they become transaction items after they are processed in the queue. And uh, let's see how we can uh, take these transaction items and do something with them. So let's create a new process. We will call it, uh, yeah, get transaction item here. While we do that, we go ahead to uh, UiPath Orchestrator. We'll create a queue, test queue, our famous. Uh, leave the settings as they are, add the queue, and now it, it's created here. So let's go back to UiPath Studio, open the main workflow. Now we will, uh, let's make an entire flow chart with uh, every action in, but I will move quickly over uh, the create uh, orchestra queue and add queue items because you've seen that, but it's good to have it repeated and uh, let's make the entire process now. So flow chart here, drag it in, Click the arrows and we're ready to start. So first we need to um, make a sequence to create the data. We'll drag that in here. Create data, double click it. Now we need the, uh, remember we had the data here. So we want um, some of the data. I think we need the order data, the rep, that's the name and the total. And then we will search for big sales afterwards. So what we need here is a read range and we will use the workbook just so we don't need to set the Excel scope. That's equally good in for this use. The workbook path, let me shift right click here, copy as path, head back and paste it in here, the path. We could also have find it in via, via the file structure. Choose sheet one and let me delete this so it will um, be the entire uh, sheet. Now we need a for each row, if you remember that. So for each row, and uh, what we do, what we need to do here, we need to specify in the read range. We need to specify a data table, so that will be the control K, DT sample data up here, um, and then we can. Oh, did I specify it? Yep, it got created. So and then we can uh, put it in here. So now we'll, we'll go through the data table, each row that will correspond to each of these rows. Um, and then we want it to add it to the queue item that, that was like we saw before. So drag in the add queue item here. And we we won't uh, do anything with the properties except the important ones. So we're, again, go back to the video if you forgot what uh, some of these was. So the queue name, that was our test queue. Quotation marks, test. Q, and then what uh, informations do we need? I think we will need the um, well, first off, we'll need the uh, order date, and then to get that, we will uh, use our row item. That was what I was about to write. The order was it in one word? Yep, order date. To string here and we will take the rep and create it the same way so row item so what we're doing now is that we're adding the queue item like we did before here and oh what's happening here delete delete this one and this one we will rename to total one time too many total and then row item total to string like this and now we created the data we added it to the queue uh, that was here then we need to uh, get the transaction item so that will um, the transaction the get transaction item activity that will get one transaction like one by one. So what we need to we need to specify the queue that will be the test queue in quotation marks here, and then we uh, need to output it to a variable, and that variable will be a queue item. 
So um, we could uh, press Control K. I think we will need the prefix Q i and then we can just call it item qi item here like this and um, we see that it shows up here we can also if we have chosen the reference up in the uh, get qi uh, add q item then we could uh, filter it here either start with or equal however we won't because uh, i think you'll get the point um, so what we do here is that we will, now we got the transaction item, like let's say the first one. Then we want to uh, know that, uh, let's say that if the queue is empty, then we want to stop. So it wasn't, it won't be an infinite loop. So we want a, a like some, core, some, some sort of a condition to evaluate on. And that one we can use the, um, the flow, um, Flow decision. Let me here drag it in here. We will uh, name it to an appropriate name called MTQ here. And what should our condition be? That should be something we can uh, say true or false. And how do we do that? Well, we can say that if this one is empty, it's nothing. Oops. It's a bit uh, difficult to know this, but if this is nothing, that means there's, there's nothing in it. Then the queue is empty. So then we want the process to stop. Usually we will uh, in the process, process in a more elegant way, but in this example, the message box is just fine. And this one is queue empty. Quotation marks, of course, uh, we will stop like this. Otherwise, we will do something with uh, the uh, transaction item. So if this one is false, then that means that the queue is not empty yet. Remember, it will take one by one. Then we will um, make another sequence to actually save the data from the transaction item. So right now we got a transaction item, like that's a, it actually is a queue item. And um, in that item, we got uh, all the data stored and we need that data out of it. So this one, we will save the data. Actually, so we are taking it out of the item, the queue item. Save data here. And then we will double click it. And then we just need to have some assigns so, uh, and by the way, if you think I talk too fast, just let me know. Some of you have said that, but some of you have said that I, it's fine. So let me know what you think. Um, we need the three variables out, or is that just order date? Control K, order date, here. See that it's created here, we'll just set it as a string. Then uh, how do we get it out? Then we will uh, q i tim here. And then we need the specific content command here, and then order date in quotation marks dot to string like this. Then we got the rep control k rep q i item here specific then quotation marks rep just if you want just pause the video if it's going a bit too fast and then finally the total so control k total q item here specific content and then what did we we wanted the total to string like this i think we've got it all right let me check here here Yep. So now we we save the, tr the three ones into strings, so we can work with them. And uh, what do we want to do now? Well, now um, we want to. Uh, now it's just strings, so we can do whatever we want with them, uh, as you usually do with data. But um, let's show that that we can actually do something with them and uh, make the loop. Uh, to take the next one, so we'll 
have a flow decision. Let's say that we want to evaluate if there was a big sale, let's say over 1000. I'll just close this one down because when we run it, it will uh, not run if the Excel is open. So here, and then we can uh, flow decision. We will just name it big sale here. What should the condition be? Now we need uh, the string here. That's uh, like, first of all, we need to uh, change the scope of the three variables to the whole flow chart. So it's not uh, only um, visible in here. It needs to um, have the whole flow chart as scope. So change it. Now we can see it again. We want to know if the total is over a thousand. However, we got a problem because this is a string and we want to evaluate on an integer so we can and we want to calculate something on it later. So what we do is that we just uh, do this and then we uh, we cannot use an integer because we get, I think we got decimals. So we use a double. So what we write, we just write the .NET command double pass here and then uh, total. That was the variable here. And what did we want? If that total is greater than a thousand, then that's the condition. So if it's not, then we want nothing to happen. We just want to get the next, next transaction item, evaluate if it's empty or not, and then just move on. So we'll just make an connect the false, sorry, here. Then we get the next transaction. However, if we get a big sale, and this one is true, and we will drag in the message box. I think I'll move it over here. And we want something to be written. So that could be oh nice. We got a big sales from and then the rep. That's the rep uh, variable. And then we need on date and then we need a date in order date here plus with a total of and then the total here that's it now we just need to um, so whenever we see this message box we just after that we need the next transaction item sorry here now we created the whole loop. So let me go through it before we run it. Start here. Here we will create the data. And uh, we create the data from an Excel sheet to a data table. Then we will add it to a queue that we created an orchestrator. Then we will get the transaction item. We will check if the queue is empty. If that's the case, we will end here. If it's not, Sorry, we will go here and save the data into three variables. Then we will evaluate on those three variables if it if it's a, a big sale, uh, and only under one. We actually only evaluate on the total, but we'll uh, use the three variables. If it's big sale, then we will write something. Uh, yeah, whatever. Usually you won't use message boxes, but it's good for this example because it keeps it quite simple. Let's try to run it. And let's see if they guess if we get some errors. If we got, let's try to fix it. We like that. So from that we learn. And if there's none, then we've just been real really good today. <coughs> it will run a bit, it depends on your nice. Now we can see that we got a big sale here from parent. Let's uh, open the Excel sheet. We can open it again because it created the data. Um, actually we can uh, go here into the queue if we want as well. So let me do that. Now I've got three things going, but view transaction in the queue. We can see that it added 43 um, to the queue, items to the queue. We can uh, do 50 and we can see that they all come here. Some of them are in progress, but it will, they will come in just a few seconds here. Here, yep. And then we will uh, check if it's right. So parent, that should be the first one that's here. Yep, 1619, yep, that's right. And the next one should be parent again, and then Smith. 
So now it will run through the next rows. That's parent. That's what's right. Then Smith. Yep. And then we will just move a bit fast over the last ones just to see if it, it, it will end the process uh, right with our message box when the queue was empty. Mm, now we are the Thompson here. We will have the Jardine and now it should close the process. Queue empty. We will stop. Done. So that's how you create a date, some data, add queue item, add it to the queue in Orchestrator here. We can check the queue now. Um, and how you process everything. Now we can see that there the status is in progress here, like this.